Pati sa samupada, dependent origination, number 12. <coughs> Upadana Pyesaya Bawo because of grasping as condition, life action arises. This is on the, the ninth link of dependent origination. Grasping and life action. <laughs> so here the Pali word, Bawa. B H A V A, which we translate it as life action. Okay, what does bawa means? Bawa means life. Okay. Life in all three time zones. Life in the past, life as present, life in the future. That's called life. That's called Bawa. So based on what Bawa you are talking about, one should be aware of it. Bawa is life. <coughs> it covers the whole past, present, and future. <coughs> and life Bawa, life. Life is defined by all actions. Mental actions, verbal actions, physical actions, all actions. One makes during one's existence or lifetime. All the actions that one makes three kinds of action, physical, verbal, mental. And that is life. You have to explain or what life is. Life is the accumulation of all your actions. Therefore, Bawa actually is action. Bawa is life. Bawa is Action, life is action. <coughs> These three kinds of actions, physical, verbal, and mental, are causes. They are the causes which give rise to effect. If there is a cause, there is effect. These actions are the causes as they cause, it will give result or effect. So all these causes, all these actions in one word, you can call it karma. We know the word karma. We heard it quite often. What is karma? It's all these causes, all these actions collectively is called karma. So you can call in a sense life or bawa is karma. Okay? Bawa is karma. Therefore it is appropriate to call bawa of this night link independent origination as Kama Bawa. Okay? Bawa, but we added up another word Kama, Kama Bawa. And English we translate it as life action. Action qualifies life. That's why we call it life action. Action. That's one way. Let's see how we can look at it in another way what Bawa is. 
a what is life directly translated is basically life a what my life is good my life is bad my bawa is good, my bawa is bad. I have a lucky life. I have a lucky bawa. So, this life constitutes different presentation. This life constitutes wholesome and unwholesome activities or wholesome and unwholesome actions. All the good things you do and all the bad things you do is your life. That's how one can know how your life is. In a layman time, how you are, what you are. So, all the wholesome and unwholesome actions what are they? Again, all the wholesome and unwholesome the actions that you do is karma. Therefore, you can call it karma bawa or life actions. All actions or karma are conditioned these actions, these karma, these karma bawa are conditioned by four kinds of grasping, upadana. In the last talk, we explain in detail what the four types of grasping are. Most of us become strongly attached to desirable sense objects. Desirable sense object, basically something or someone that's a desirable sense object. And we do all sort of physical, verbal and mental activities or actions <clears throat> to get those desirable objects. That's it. That's our life. Whatever we like, we try to get it. Whatever we don't like it, we try to push it away. So, why? Because we are strongly attached, grasping, upadana to these desirable objects. So, such actions that we make to get the desirable, to get the desirable object, what is it? They are karma. Or you can call it karma bawa. As in the ninth link of dependent origination, or translated into English, life action, L-I-F-E dash A-C-T-I-O and life action. Let's call it a new word. So that is with the desirable sense object attachment to it. But some become strongly attached to a wrong view through belief. You can't believe in something wrong through logic and analysis and analytical and detail stripping down. It's simply belief, blind faith. Through a belief system, you become attached do a wrong view. As an example is, is believe or not believe. Not believe is also a belief. By not believing in the law of causality, okay, 
law of causality. If there's a cause, there's an effect. If there's a good cause, you will have a good effect. If there's a bad cause, you will receive a bad effect. Law of causality. By not believing in the law of causality, you will do all good things and bad things. Unwholesome, unwholesome things and wholesome things. Or actions. Without having any regard to the consequences because you don't believe there's any consequences that's not believing in law of causality and thus make wrong view driven karma bawa okay. all these activities are wrong view driven Based on your belief, you do it. That's a, another type of bawa, life, driven by the engine of wrong view. And also, some of us believe liberation can be brought about by engaging in a certain practice. From the Buddhist point of view, we call it wrong practices. We have explained that in detail, so I won't go through what wrong practices and how it comes about. Just to give a few examples is a sacrificial offering, praying, chanting, drawing figures and diagrams, mandala, practicing concentration meditation, believing that these things will give you liberation from all form of suffering. So by committing to such practices, by committing to such practice makes wrong practice driven karma bawa. You still have this karma bawa life action, but it is driven by the engine of wrong practice, believing in the wrong practice. That's another one. And the final, of course, you know what the final is. Some believe there is, in fact, many of us believe there's an eternal soul, indestructible eternal soul. And based on the belief we did and we do all sort of wholesome and unwholesome things or actions to uplift the status of the soul okay. to be higher and higher and higher, better and better and better, greater and greater and greater. With that objective in mind, to uplift the status of a soul, we do all these wholesome and unwholesome things so that we can get a better existence in this life or in the next life and many, many lives to come. Better existence. So, by committing to such belief system, soul, eternal soul, We make soul concept driven kamabawa, life action. Life action arises. The driving engine is believing in the concept of soul. That's the key driving engine. So, we now know kamabawa, life actions, can be 
conditioned by one or the other of these four grasping upadana. So, we go a little more detail into how this kamabawa life actions can be formed or conditioned by grasping. Now, there's one thing if you are aware of the all the links we have been talking. Link number one Today is link number nine, one to nine. If you understand them quite clearly, you will find karma. Okay, you will find the karma in the ninth link, which is what we are talking right now, under the name of bawa or karma bawa life action. On the nine link, this karma is called bawa, karma bawa, or life action. I just explained how these names comes about. And this same karma you can see in the first link. First link. But it has a different name. The name is called Sinkara. The name is Sinkara. English, Kama Formation. Sinkara, Kama Formation, or Mental Formation, depending on under what context you're reading. So, Kama repeat again. In the first link and in the ninth link. But they have a uh, different names. Why? The same karma repeating itself using two different names in uh, two separate links. We need to understand why. So let's go to the first link. If you remember, Avijja Pichya Sinkara because of ignorance as condition mental formation arises. So ignorance is a key conditioning factor for the arising of the karma formation called Sinkara. So what's the difference? We started with difference between Sankara and Bawa, link one and link nine. One difference is time. This karma formation Sankara in the first link belongs to the past life. Past tense belongs to the past life. Technically, this Sankara is 52 mental factors or mental associates in Pali Chetasika. There are 52 of them. This Sankara is Chetasika, 52 Jadasika, except mental contact, pasa, and perception, sanya. You have to struct, subtract those two out of the 52, and that is sankara. So, if you subtract two, there are 50 left. These 50 factors. You don't want to repeat again and again. They give a name so that we can just say the name and you know what it is. 
these 50 factors are named mental formation, sankara. If it is 52, you call jidasika, mental factors. If it is this 50, we call it mental formation, sankara. These are simple, but you need to know with precision. So as soon as you heard a name, you know what it is. So you give the sankara for ease of communication, just one word. You know, we know what it is. One of these 50 factors is called volition and Pali Chetana. Okay. There are 50 factors in Kama formation and one of those is volition Chetana. This volition is very interesting. It always arises with every other factors. In other words, is the salt, Mr. Salt. Any dish you cook, you have to put a little bit of salt. Without the salt, there's no taste. So, this volition, Chetana, associated with every other mental factors. It's constant. So in the dependent origination, it's stated due to ignorance, due to ignorance, mental formation arises. That's a first link. However, as volition, Jitana is associated with every other factors. This can be called volitional activities. Can be called volitional activities. Sankara is, karma formation is volitional activities all the activity you make and of course volition is always there volitional activities so it can be called volitional activities but what is volitional activities all the things you do simple karma volitional activity is karma So, karma formation instead of mental formation. In general, when you are talking about the five aggregates, sankara is translated as mental formation. But in dependent origination, the same thing, we call it karma formation. To emphasize, to spotlight the role karma play. That's the reason we switch the words from mental to karma. Mental formation, sankara. Karma formation, sankara. When you say karma formation, you emphasize the role that karma plays to explain the dependent origination. At the first link. <coughs> so that will give you a, a little fair understanding about this karma. Why is it called sankara? Kama formation at the first link of dependent origination. 
So let's see about this comma on the ninth link. Okay. What is the ninth link? In Pali, Upadana Picheya Bawo. Grasping as condition. Grasping as because of grasping as conditioning factor. Life action arises. That's the ninth link. So grasping is the key conditioning factor for the arising of life action. Straight, immediate. No if or but. That's why karma is called bawa. Life action on this ninth link of dependent origination. Now this karma bawa, because we call it a bawa because of the karma to emphasize the rule of karma, we'll call this bawa, karma bawa. Bawa is life. Karma bawa is life action. Here, this karma bawa, or life action, of the ninth link, of dependent origination belongs to the present life. There's a difference between the first one, Sankara. Sankara belongs to the past life, and this Bawa or Kama Bawa belongs to the present life. So grasping is the key conditioning factor of Bawa. But this grasping basically is the subsequent growth in the intensity of attachment from craving. Craving is also attachment, weak attachment. And right after craving, it grows into grasping, but stronger attachment. Subsequent growth. It is automatically. Without craving, there can be no grasping, period. But there can be craving without grasping. For some objects that you are neutral to, just little craving, brush by, and that's it, pass on. Therefore, it is appropriate to call craving and grasping are key conditioning factors for the arising of life action, karma bawa. Before we just say grasping as condition, life action arises. Now we like to put further emphasis. Craving and grasping are the conditioning factors and life action arises. <coughs> because the difference is only the intensity and it grows right away, one after the other. So, at the present life, for that matter, present moment. Let's go. We are right now and right here. Present life is far and wide. Right? Present moment. This craving, the na, and grasping, upadana, they are available to directly observe. Right now, right here, this craving and grasping, Tanha and Upadana, are available for you to observe directly because they are very obvious in your field of attention. These are playing very active role, moment to moment, 
at this present time. Because feelings are always arising, therefore craving will be always arising, grasping will be always arising. They are very obvious and can be easily available to observe directly. That is why present life, the current life, we take that obviously observable driving force. The driving force, this tanha and upadana, craving and grasping are the very strong driving force and it's obvious to observe. We consider these two as the key conditioning factor for the making of karma. Because these two are the one that is driving you to do things. When you do things, that's karma. So they are the key driving force to make karma. Or karma bawa, or life action. One and the same. Different words. You can use any words you like. So, let's see. Summarize and see how it goes. Both mental formations. Okay. What is this? both mental formation. Mental formation, sankara, life action, bawa. These both, mental formation and life actions, are actually, in essence, is karma. That's number one. And this mental formation, the first one, belongs to the past life and the other life actions belong to the present life. At present life we can observe this craving and grasping directly. Craving and grasping directly. So, current driving force, which is constantly active in the field of attention, is designated as key conditioning factors for karma, or you can call it karma bawa, or life action. For life action, the key conditioning factor is tatna and upadana, craving and grasping. And for karma formation, sankara, the rule that plays key conditioning is ignorance, awaja. In here, that will be sufficient. This much will be sufficient. But we'll extend farther when we come to review with regard to these two based on and backed up by scriptures. May all of you be able to understand the role that craving and grasping play and how it is directing and maneuvering and driving our life activities clearly and may we be able to steer ourselves on the right path as soon as possible. Sadhu, sadhu, Sadhu.
Thank you very much.